Hello, my name is Tej van Pettinger from Economics Help, and today I'd like to talk briefly about stagflation. Stagflation is a, a situation where an economy is experiencing uh, rising inflation, but falling output, higher unemployment at the same time. So it's a particularly unwelcome set of economic circumstances. One way that stagflation is measured is through something called the misery index. The misery index is just simply adding the inflation rate to the unemployment rate. So you can see that in the 1970s, the misery index rose uh, quite high. And uh, in recent years, in uh, say 2008, uh, 2011, the misery index rose. And as we come into 2021, 2022, there are concerns that we're getting a return to stagflation. So what causes stagflation? Well, often it is a rise in uh, raw material prices, in particular oil. Because if there's a rise in oil prices, then this will make all transported goods more expensive and uh, consumers pay more for petrol, for gas, for diesel. And so this leads to higher uh, consumer price inflation. But at the same time, the inflation is reducing people's um, purchasing power because their wage may stay the same, but prices are going up. So overall spending will tend to uh, go down and other goods will be bought less because people are spending more on petrol. So if a rise in the price of oil is quite significant, then this can cause both inflation but also lower uh, economic growth, lower output. Stagflation could also be caused by other factors such as a slowdown in productivity, a rise in structural unemployment. So if the economy is doing well and there's a big increase in productivity, for example, new technology, new working practices, then this will enable more goods to be produced at a lower price. But if this productivity stops, say for example, people are going on strike, there's no technological improvements, uh, there's supply chain issues like in the UK and uh, Europe, problems with uh, deliveries and uh, shortages of goods uh, and raw materials. So this is causing supply shocks and this causes the cost push inflation. From an economic perspective, we see that the aggregate supply curve shifts to the left and this causes the rise in the price level and fall in output. The stagflation of the 1970s was a very important economic turning point because until the 1970s, uh, in the post-war period, Keynesian economics had been um, quite dominant because it seemed the uh, government or central bank could manage the economy through fiscal and monetary policy. You know, if there's a slowdown, cut interest rates, boost spending, and if there's inflation, increase interest rates and reduce inflation. Now the problem with a tool like monetary policy, let's take interest rates, is that you can either reduce inflation through higher rates, or you can try to reduce unemployment by cutting rates. But you can't solve both at the same time. So this is why stagflation is a bit of a sticking point. Because what does a government do if you get higher inflation and higher unemployment at the same time? There's no easy fix. Because traditionally central banks or the government can only tackle one at once, um, and they have to choose. So usually in stagflation, we say there's a worse trade-off, that we have to accept either higher inflation or higher unemployment, or most likely a bit of both. Now, in the long term, you could say the solution to stagflation is to try to overcome the supply bottlenecks, try to increase uh, the supply of uh, goods and services, increase, overcome labour shortages that the UK are experiencing, and perhaps find new energy sources that don't rely on oil. So for example, if solar technology keeps improving, then in a few years time, we may be quite surprised at how much energy and power we can get from solar panels or wind power. And therefore the price of oil will be much less able to cause these spikes in inflation that we're seeing at the moment when we're dependent upon oil. So stagflation is definitely a tricky time for uh, governments and central banks because there's this uh, unfortunate trade-off. And after the 1970s, it brought in a new um, type of economics called monetarism because monetarists like Milton Friedman said, 
this shows the uh, Keynesian economics isn't working and they advocated controlling the money supply to control inflation. And in both the UK and the US, in the early 80s, we had a, a rise in interest rates to control inflation and get it under control. But it was at the expense of quite a deep recession and a strong rise in unemployment. So we'll have to see what happens uh, in 2022 with stagflation, but um, it's not good for the average consumer and worker because their living standards are probably going to be reduced when this situation occurs.